What's up guys? We're out here for another week. We just had Gustang last week, which is kind of hard to believe. Right now we got a bunch of things. For one, rice pot is increased. It goes up all the way to 500, I believe. It got a whole 100 levels. So um, right now I'm just trying to kind of brute force my way up there. I'm not going to post any other gameplay on right spot just because it's tedious and very very long to progress through uh, I am quite disappointed that they just didn't increase the level cap so that's that's kind of what makes me not want to do the progression but at the same time I'd rather have higher tower of trial floors for better rewards when I use my keys so I am just hoping that the experience is added on and it's not lost and when the level cap increases, it just carries over because it'll be pretty messed up. Uh, but it's no news on the level cap at least. So it is a 100 level increase for right spot. And uh, another important thing actually is this improvement. So now when you're going to go through the auto boss challenge, it's not going to get stuck on a boss fight unless you can't kill it. So it's, it's really good. I mean, Korea had, has and has had this feature for as long as I remember playing it. Uh, so over there, you could just keep leaving the boss auto challenge on. It's going to keep progressing through the floors, never stop. On here, it would just stop every 10 floors. So now if you're really behind on right spot or whatever, you can enjoy the comfort of just letting it roll through automatically. I don't think it's going to be a noticeable thing unless you're a brand new player. But it's a nice change to have. Also, we do have ourselves the Archimedes Cruise Party event right now. I just love how there's no sound. So we're going to have to change that and include our own. Uh, but there's a few things going on with this. So you can collect stamps to get rewards. You can get the login rewards every single day. You can do some kind of octopus raid. And there's also a souvenir shop from the octopus things that you get and a photo zone so let's see so the memories of summer days is the weekly login i believe or two weeks login um yeah i mean honestly i can't get enough of the art in this game like our our team is just carrying oh i don't even i don't even read what the conversation was oh, okay yeah so we got 20 keys today uh i don't think they posted the rewards. Well, I don't even know what we're getting from this, but we are supposed to get 50 red tickets and 100 blues. So as you see there, that was on the forum post. So we're supposed to be getting 50 reds and 100 blues. And we're going to see if there's somewhere in the events or what it entails on. I thought it was originally the login event, but it's not. So photo zone. I don't know. Just get a picture not just here but in the community the event is going on i guess so it's a community involvement okay summer stamp rally so this is the login event and i'll somehow it's straight to day two but it should be the first day we have a month for this it's actually very very good so we're getting this is where we're getting the 100 blues from and 50 reds but you're also getting three blue eggs from this that you can choose and select and from the other half you can get six blue pets and if you're a new player new account this is going to be massive for you because you'll be able to get this again a pet and just immediately get the passive we're also going to get a legendary SVP selection which is kind of bad get ourselves expert upgrade stone selection chest overall it's very good i mean it's all free stuff to log in so that's a nice addition then we have the game center so you fight this little squid thing. I might as well just do it for no reason. Let's just see what happens. All right, we're ready to destroy this thing. Level 20 octopus is going to stand no chance. Oh, so it's a wave kind of thing. Makes sense. So what is this? Just how many times you can kill this in two minutes? Or is it going to get harder every time? I can't even tell because it's just getting wiped away. 
Oh, it is. Okay, this is kind of cool. You know what? I might just use their ignition in one time just to get the damage boost and be a bigger savage. It does look like it's going up in levels though. It's like 215 now. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think, ooh, magic damage. 70% magic damage permanently is like insane. For Enryu and Goosetang. So right now I got Enryu's permanent buff. Goosetang's permanent buff. So now I can go back to this. Okay. Should have probably put like someone else instead of white, but we're gonna see how high we can go. Ooh, we got okay, crit though. Crit is guaranteed crits right now, 500%. So it's level 275. It's a little bit more durable. It goes to 285. I mean, this is, this is a fun event. You know, it's like a nice break from Tower of Hardship. I feel like if I put Sachi or. Someone else, like Zhao Zhao or something would be much better than even white. But I went into this not knowing exactly what it was. Okay, 315. Getting a lot more durable. I probably don't even need a healer, but Al Bell does giving good damage boost. Oh, I cleared it. So there's 20 waves, I guess? Wow, there is. Exactly. Okay. So there's exactly 20 waves. Um, You get octopus badges. So it's literally just like I said, a tower uh, hardship. Where you're going to have to clear this every single day. Go up to the highest, and then you get some badges which are going to take you to the shop. So I got 3,820 from my first attempt at this today. I'm hoping you can get that every day. So then the last thing to do is a souvenir shop. Um, so the best thing is we're getting a random character, a legendary, and it's from the second ticket. So you get the addition of getting these five on the bottom. You can get your Ha Jin, Sung Bong Bong, White Heavenly, or Yon, including the original. That's really cool for 5,000 of these. So you can get it tomorrow if you can clear 20 and 20. Uh, and then you can also get the legendary one, so you get a random uh, ignition weapon. And same thing applies pretty much. There's also some reds in here, some blues. Get epic gift boxes. Now the thing is, these are weekly purchases. So, you have how much? 4 days and 16 hours left for the weekly re renew. So you're probably better off getting the weekly purchases first. And then, rather go for all the one-time things during this event. Because this event should be going on for... I don't know how long. It doesn't say how long the event's going on for. No, it's going on until August 15th. You have until August 15th to clear out the shop. Definitely choose the weekly purchases first. That's what I'm going to aim for. Probably start with the skill books because uh, I need to get Goosetang's skills out anyway. It was a very good summer event. Now, we also do have another new unit, which makes five this month. You had Summer you had summer Zhao Zhao, the Summer Endorsey, the Summer Yon, and Gustang, which is our first Ancient. And uh, now we got Midnight Aura Rachel. So, great art as always. The first legendary Rachel in the game, because she is a purple unit. With her Jellyfish Parasol Ignition Weapon. But taking a look at Rachel, so she is a Fog Lightbearer. Breaks the trend of being all tower climbers for summer. So her first skill, uh, she's basically, in short summary, a combination of like Yuraha, Sachi, and... Well, Sachi in the sense of CC, uh, and then Summer Yon. Because her first skill will decrease the enemy's magical damage and a percentage wise. And at the first dupe, it does an extra 15% decrease. And at four, she does it for an extra two seconds. So at best, it is a 65% magic damage decrease to the unit with the highest attack. And it will last for six seconds, which is actually very good. Uh, the game is very magic damage heavy. So that's great. Percentage isn't too high. But it does hit three times, so in the in the end, it is like almost 1,000%. Uh, 
Uh, then you also have the second skill, which stuns the highest attacked unit. And at T5, it becomes an AoE, so it's going to stun every single enemy around it, even. And then you're going to also have yourself an additional 100% magic damage for the second dupe. So, it becomes really, really good at T5 when you get this stun to the AoE. Her passive is going to increase her own magical damage, and a T3 gives a shield to all teammates. So a 60% magic damage, huge boost. You also have the EX, which ends up being a blind and silence for 3 seconds, while targeting the highest attack and hitting all enemies within range. And at T6, it decreases all the enemies' magic damage by 20% for 6 seconds. So honestly, I feel like her kit is stacked. Looks really good. And my her ignition actually looks pretty good too. Because instead of just the standard damage stuff, she is doing damage. But she is also decreasing the enemy's magic damage by 30% for 2 seconds during her ignition. And increasing teammates' attacks. So it's very she's very good, honestly. Um I feel like she is the uh, updated Yuraha. So if you don't have Yuraha T6. Because he, her EX is also where you needed to have her T6 in order for this to silence and blind and stun or whatever the whole team. Now you could just get Midnight Aurora Rachel. Ends up doing that without the T6. So you don't even need your Aha. If you don't have your Aha T6 by now, you can give up and just get Summer Rachel. And she does offer more utility. So you're going to end up getting Magical Damage Decrease, a Shield, and a Stun with her kit. Uh, you will probably need to get yourself the 60% bug uh, EX gauge charge thing. And that's kind of rough because it's for a magical fog weapon that only her and Viol would use. But overall, I think Rachel is an amazing unit. I mean, I'd, I'd almost like to say that if you don't have Yuraha T6, you'd probably prioritize her over Emerald Ocean Yone. But in the end, I think you need both of them. You will need Emerald Ocean Yone and Midnight Aurora Rachel to progress through High End, Right Spot, and Tower of Trial. Uh, but overall, I think she's a great unit that, that's come out there in the summer. Probably one of the best ones right now. We do also have this new Memory Shard system, which is the Faith Amplification. So the way it works is you have to have a certain amount of affinity, and then you can unlock these memories. So you can actually go into rocks, for instance, go into memory shard. Don't remember what the exact minimum is. It's like either you need to get affinity two and four, but you'd have to go into the dungeon and actually complete the memory. So you go through all this. I'm going to probably play out all the uh, memory shards for everyone to see just in case they don't have access to it. But I feel like by now you probably, everyone probably has access to all these. And then we also have the second one for rock. So there's the two memory shards activated, and i um, not entirely sure what affinities you need. I'm assuming it would probably be two and four. I could be wrong, but you can see here that the first um, memory is going to increase his uh, second skill, I believe, and his passive. While the second memory is for the EX. So you can also double check that by going into this. Actually, skill one, sorry, not skill two. So... This gives the this is what makes him so good as a support is that he's going to be giving physical damage boost to a knock and um then he's going to just be the support for that and his ex is also going to make everybody have increased damage as well as bomb so very very good um and as you can see here once you just upgrade the skill it's an added bonus so now we're going to have to probably invest in rock i don't know how it's going to change with a knock or um yeah having a knock and rock and you know, Gustang in the mix because my admin damage has been insane, but we will test it out later today. So we have his Fate Amplification unlocked. We're going to just go for everyone else, and I literally never use Rock <laughs> until this. I've been waiting for this moment.
So we're gonna have a knock now, and it's the same thing. I mean, as far as I can tell, it's gonna be second memory is for the EX, and the first two will be for skill one and passive, or skill two and passive, whatever the skills may be. But let's see what an ox is looking like. I will say though, this is like so pointless. Why do we have to go to a fight that just does not even end in a victory or not? <laughs> you know, it just make us watch the cutscene. It's cool, you know, you get to see the story, and then just be like, here you feel closer or whatever. But it is what it is. Um, and the way the, the fates work is that they're gonna be tied to the unit. So these are for the first bomb. These are the fate amplifications, and they're only gonna affect any unit that's in this web so rock is going to boost every single person in this web and knock is going to only work, be affected with everyone else in this web and same goes for yuri ha so we are going to unlock everything just because Then we have Yuri Ha, so let's just take a look at Anox. She was supposed to be the main carry or after NRU. Uh but she gets a skill two amplification. It's gonna be increased physical damage. And then she's also gonna get increased uh, bombs defense. And she's gonna get increased attack speed. So plus she gets the reinforced skill. I mean just insane damage is gonna be coming out from Anox. As long as you have both fate amplification effects. And assuming everybody picked her from the Transcend Plus 6 event, you have no excuse not to get her fate amplification. There we have Yuri Ha's memory shards complete and uh, probably you know we're not going to use. I mean, we are at the point where she was like a bruiser and the only tank in the beginning of the game besides Urek. But now we have Hoakin, that's a purple. Uh, although she does end up getting a physical damage increase if she has more than 50% HP. And if it's less than that, she ends up recovering her own HP. So it's a pretty good boost I feel like then she's also gonna get the bomb package for the passive but she also has a stun added to her EX and she does increase or yeah she increases the cooldown rate for teammates that are on the bombs uh, fate web and increases bombs crit damage so you know she's not she's not bad at all I mean these changes are good but she just doesn't have a place in the game anymore I feel like so now we got the three for bomb out the way. There is one for Viol, however. It's gonna be Bong Bong and Dorothy. So let's get these going.
Not Bong Bong's finished. So, he is the first one outside of the first bomb to actually get a amplification. And for skill 2, so she has DC immunity, uh, which is cool. Increase Viol's defense, and then for her EX, increases Viol's defense while decreasing the enemy's recovery effect. Now, it's uh, pretty good. It's I don't think it's going to make her more relevant, but if someone is using like a healer in the back line, for instance, like an Evan, you can pretty much pull her out as she does kind of just nuke them to the front, and she'd kind of reduce the healing going on. Uh, so, you know, not the best, not the greatest, but it is a buff. Well, since we're on the fates, I do find it interesting, though, that Rachel's affinity is going to be shared with the purple one. And it's really interesting because if you look at the affinity grade requirements for hero units or purples, 528,000. Uh, gift points just to get level 30 but for an actual legendary it's 1 million and 56 so you know and it's actually really good because you can save a lot of fate gifts the real issue I feel like is always the starlights but you will use a lot less gifts to get her plus 25 I find that pretty cool it's not something that I would have ever thought would happen now we also do have the Tower of Trial. The Tower of Trial is now going up to 450. Which is not something that we would have expected. I don't think we wanted a tower increase. But it goes up to 450, level 330, 336. Um, I don't know how it's going to work out. I mean that's an insane level difference. You'd need like over a thousand accuracy and probably still levels for that but yeah we're just not getting a level boost right now just so strange just we're long overdue to releasing so many new units and events and functions but progression wise this is like a sudden jump and then there's still no level cap increase however though this time around it's insanely good it's gonna last also until august 15th the tower of trial I kind of hate it happened as I used up so many keys, but it doesn't matter. We're going to replenish keys anyway. So during the event, you're going to get double the drop rate of materials and skill books. And if you're using the accelerators, it's going to count as times five rewards instead of times three. So now is the time up until August 15 to spam your keys. If you have any hard story you didn't finish. Get the stars going, get some more keys. Now's your chance to try to get as many keys as you can because double the rewards, getting better accelerators. Does, I can't imagine that happens too often. It has also been the next season of Name Hunt Station. Um, I got some stuff to improve on. I really just don't care for this mode too much. I could reach a higher score, but I haven't messed around with it too much. So I'm stuck at 6th place for Alfine and 5th place for Arianeta. Which, to think, these are still like the next units we're supposed to be getting sometime in the future. I mean, Elaine is going to be outdated by the time she comes out, unless she gets like a buff. And Arianeta is actually something that we're looking forward to, because he's like the first improvement on a tank um, since Jinsung. I mean, I wouldn't really count Hawakin because he's a purple, you know, but I feel like Arianeta is going to be amazing. So he's someone I wanted to get T6 when he does come out, but we're still waiting for that. Don't forget, this is the second season of Neymar Station right now. I don't know if it's going to ever come back after the third season ends, but I'd say that it's a really cool mode. I, I do think it's, it's nice. Also, we do have ourselves a new season pass, and it is great because it's a blacksmith card. So I'm like so happy about that. I really need more blacksmith cards. This season pass is going to have that. I don't think the rewards got overhauled at all, but I don't remember what they were, and I don't want to check through them right now. So I gotta make sure I get the starlights from here, and I have to probably renew all of my weekly packs. Yep, so, uh, I was supposed to renew it yesterday, but, oh well. I don't have the time to even remember to do that. So I just did get the 
season pass already, and then I did renew the weekly passes. Um, I have to eventually get this as well from the story clearing to get myself to 5,000 diamonds, 6,000 in total, but I have to still finish chapter 17, and I'm just not doing it because of the experience rewards, so not in a rush for diamonds, I'm fine for now. Event-wise, we do have the head-on research exchange shop here. That's for Rachel's thing. So pretty standard stuff. She does get her own event since it replaced Endorsey's. And nothing too special about that. The Transcend 6 event. I don't know if it's permanent or what. But I still see it on my screen. Uh, I do want to say that there should be a T6 ignition weapon event as well. If I remember, Korea gave out a plus T6 character and plus T6 ignition weapon. So I was originally planning on using the Destiny Summon to max a Nox weapon, but I'm hoping that that weapon ignition T6 event comes out before then. And I can probably use that to just get it. Uh, and I use my Destiny Summon on some other weapon. But we don't know any information or any news on that right now. Wasn't even on the road roadmap either. But if I had that choice, I think... Yeah, I don't know whose weapon I would go for. Um, don't really have much of a choice. I do feel like... If I could pick a Nox weapon at T6, I would maybe just take the risk and... Destiny summon rocks to six as well, because I'd only need three dupes. Besides that, I can't pick family weapons on there. So uh, I don't really know what I would do with the Destiny summon. But I really don't want to pull for seven and knock weapons with a Destiny summon. I really do hope that we just get that free choice. And now we have the blessed shop to look at. So uh, this week has the Minero Rachel special summon packages, special encounter. So you get an extra thousand diamonds with 25 summons. Not really the best deal, but you just get a little bit of extra something. Have the special gold support pack and the deluxe gold pack. Now this is so good. Uh, you also have the Fate Starlight pack, which Really wish it was better. We also have the Midnight Rachel level up package and then the stuff from last week. So it kind of makes the 100 tower trial keys more tempting now, but... You know, what are you going to really get from 100 keys at the end of the day? <laughs> I mean... I guess Destiny cards that could always stack. I mean, at this point I got enough to get Donghei T6 if he ever gets added to the blue summons. I feel like he'll get added really soon. Because if they added Kranos Yuri Ha and he's not even used, I don't see them holding out on him. But the best thing is, we also have ourselves the weekly Shinsu Hour chest package. I didn't even realize that they're limited packs. So I never noticed that there's a countdown or a time right underneath. So this pack is only going to be available for two weeks. Maybe you can squeeze in a third, but I'm pretty sure it's just for two weeks. Or you could get it three times, is what I'm trying to say. You will be able to get this pack three times. So nine in total, that's 900 hourglasses plus your 24 hour. The best value that this shop has seen are these hourglass packs, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I do want to probably stock up on the gold. We don't know what we're doing right now, so we're going to just wait and see. I'm going to stock up on the things I know I'm going to need. Okay, so I got what I think I'd get. The Deluxe Gold, I'm going to hold off for now, and the Starlights. I mean, realistically, I need the Starlights. Um, so I'll probably get it in a little bit of the video. It's like, I just I just don't want to get unnecessary packs. I'm kind of prioritizing only summoning or legendary equipment. Boy, I haven't had legendary equipment in a while. So I picked up the, sh uh, the Hourglasses, the Rage, all the Red Summons, and I picked up the cheaper Gold Support Package right now. Um, just because I don't think I really need the gold. I mean, I still have to level up boost tank skills and other things, so I probably will need to get this. Maybe make equipment too. But, you know, we don't we don't know what's going to happen right now. I mean, it's just like I'm not really in a rush. Like, I kind of lost my urge to want to go for packs and spend and all that. 
kind of, I'm kind of just at peace, you know, like I'm not really stressing out, but those cheaper packs are much better than the daily gold packages, so I would say if you're not going to get the deluxe gold package, at least get the other one, because it's like six ninety nine for 3 million gold and way the 12 hour ride spot and one 8 hour or something. But these deluxe gold packages are, they're juicy, alright, they are, you have a lot of gold and you're getting diamonds on top of that, so. Gold, unfortunately, is one of the biggest issues in globals. So you're gonna have to probably go for that, but I still have to clear out all the gold packs in this shop. I've been clearing out the weeklies, I just kind of wait till Sunday to do it. So let's see what we can do. I feel like my diamonds barely went up. I'm at 641 reds, and yes, I am going for max on Rachel. I do think she is an amazing unit. Um, so that's just why I'm going to T6 her. I feel like she's ne a necessity. I don't think I can clear Tower of Trial without her and Yon. So, gotta get her maxed out and expect that. Let's just go through my blues. Legendary? There's Daniel. I get Daniel so much. I'd kill for ignition weapons. Like, just legendary ignition weapons. Are you fucking joking me right now? I got back-to-back -back Daniel. Like, where are the odds of that? <laughs> like, where are the odds? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, like, crazy, but I really do wish there was, like, a new Ancient already. I can't believe... Like, Goosting has been amazing, by the way. Like, holy shit. He has been the best unit the team's ever had right now. Um, and yeah, I'm just like, wow, I just want the next Ancient to come out. Like, I can't believe I'm done with him. I gotta wait 48 days. Like, I'm used to working a lot, and just time goes by, but... For me to see that 48 days go away and see what the next Ancient's gonna be is still gonna feel like forever. And like I did show in the last video, if you're free to play, take your free Gustang and pull for the Ignition Weapon. This way you can guarantee it at 200, you do get 200 free summons. Just because you can still get Gustang himself or the weapon on an Ancient pull. Only the Pity actually saves you and guarantees what you're looking for. So you don't want to, if you're maxing for T6, you have to balance it out. Like, do one pity into the character, do one pity into the weapon, and go back and forth if you're doing double T6. If you're only doing Goostang, then so be it. Don't even worry about the weapon. Just do the weapon one time and then go back to Goostang. The worst worst case scenario, you know? But let's go into it. Get Rachel to pull four. I'm praying for it to be easy. I mean, there's like a lot of things to summon for. Rachel first one. Nope, I guess Sachi. So I'm really, really hoping it's an easy summon day because... So many units coming out, and we're gonna wait for. Hopefully, we get an updated roadmap in the next week or two. Because I do want to see what's next. Um, but there's still just like so many units that we're waiting on right now. There's the Midnight Aura Rachel. I was gonna pull six. Ooh. Oh my god, like I was thinking, imagine. Imagine if I got two Rachels. But I do get Yuri Ha's weapon. That's I think T3. I mean I just I just want legendary pulls. Like that's all I want. I need to keep track of when I start my summons too. I never I never realized how many summons I'm at before I start. Okay, that's T2. And for Rachel, she is a unit where you need to pretty much T3 her to get the most value. And then you probably want to go 5 or 6. F5 is really the like the best of the kit you can get. T6 is really good though because she drops everyone's magic damage even more. But, you know, you got to do what you got. So T3 right there. But for sure, I would not try to get Rachel without T3. And we get Sachi's weapon. It's fucking crazy. I literally used the blacksmith card on this like last week. But you never know, right? I would have never thought that. Oh, I'd pull his weapon again next week. I really thought I'd never see it again. Alright. Uh... There's the T4. Two more copies. Um, I think I'm getting close to halfway into the summons that I had for the reds. 
So I don't like this already. E5, let's go. Okay, one more. Please make it good. I'm tired of being average, alright? I need to be above. I need to be exceptional. Six, okay. So it was about 400 reds for T6. I'll take that. Average is about like 550. I'm not going into her weapon. I'm gonna stick to the family one. As much as I'd like to just get one ignition weapon for some power, it's not worth risking 180 summons for one ignition weapon. So you can see my Gustang is like almost passing. It's like right next to Veal's power. Like Veal is my highest character at 235k. And Gustang is at 233k, which is insane still. Because then the next one after it that isn't bomb is Enryu at 223k. So he's got 10k more than him. But he's been a beast. I am going to work on the EX skill books because I've been lacking on that. And I will need it for the progression for this Tower of Trial. So Midnight Aurora Rachel, she is Fug, which conveniently outside of the weapon, I do have a full kit for. So she is going to have really good armor. The weapon is the problem though, I don't have a Fug magic weapon, I'm probably going to do that. And then we are going to give her an ignition weapon. Stop teasing me with that, we're not going for that right now. Gonna give her the fuck family wand, especially because she gets some damage reduction. And she's gonna get increased ignition time. That's why the key is to just hope and you get lucky with these family weapons and then T6 them all. So that you can just save a lot of summons in the future. So many. And I guess I can give her accessories right, at least. Uh, I do actually have a full set now, but it's not the best. So I have a magic damage set and I have a physical damage set. I'd have to use my guardian boss keys and hope for the higher rarities or just accessories to dismantle and upgrade. But it transcends, so... Going all the way to 6. And I will definitely be trying her out in Tower of Trial today. I also have to level up her skills, so she's at 200k power. I should have enough books, so I am going to get... Can I go everything to 11? Or 10? Or at 11. Uh, I don't have a lot of advanced books, the problem. So if I go to 10... Got a 32%. Prioritize skill 1. I think skill 1, realistically. Yeah, I'll just probably do skill 1. Skill 1 can be 10. I think everything else is fine, which is going 6 for now. I'm so not used to this. I was ready to go like. One by one skill level up and skip this part, but this is so refreshing. And I should probably level up for EX. Because I do see myself using it. Um, it barely does anything. Maybe not. I'm just holding off the books right now because I have to go for Gustang and that's the only issue. So I will leave it at that. Actually, I should have done 11, so we'll just do it off. So, skill 1 11. Everything else is 6 for now. Eventually, I like to get all 11s across the board. That's like my soft spot for every character. Is just get them all level 11, and then I don't really do anything higher than that, unless it's like a really overpowered unit. So, she's at 203k. I could boost her power up by maybe another 3,000 if I do the uh, Rachel 
Rachel Faith for level 25, but I'm probably not doing that right now. And then one day I wanted to get all the purple transcends up. Like, I mean, how much does it even cost to get five and six? It's like a waste of two million just to fix my OCD. And I really don't want to do that right now. Whenever I get an abundance of gold, I'll do it. Because I'd have to spend at least 20 million just to get the multi six. For no reason either. Uh, let's see what else we can really do right now. Can actually fuse for legendaries, so we will give that a shot. Might as well transcend. Yuriha can now go to level three. And let's see what we can get. Not too many weapons. The blue fusions were actually abysmal. I think I only got two purple small blues, but got eight chances. We're hoping to get one legendary at least from this. And I got Donghei. It's funny because I literally looked at that weapon and I was like, wow, I got it. Like, I don't have many T0 legendary ignitions, but. Got Donghei. And that's that. So, at least I did get a legendary. That's going to be T1. And that just feels like the most irrelevant unit in the game to me. Like, has anyone ever seen this, this unit be used? I have never seen him used. Ever. I feel bad for the person who pulled T6 into Donghei and it stuck with him for the rest of his life. Because he looks cool. But he needs a rework or something. Like, units like him and Katano just don't work out. I don't know why they thought it was a great idea. Gorgeous art. And that's all he has going for him. Alright, so let's see what we can do to make this Rachel usable. Um, definitely needs a 60% EX weapon. And I feel like that weapon was long overdue anyway. Simply because... Oh yeah, funny thing, I was rolling through this randomly. While going for 60% on my second needle, I rolled a double legendary. Whereas Tower Climber crit and skill damage boost. So that's like insane to me. But the original one is purple crit and legendary crit. I feel like, I don't know, I would have to eventually dismantle this one into this. And try to refine this for 60%. Like, I don't know what to do. I'm just kind of waiting for my third needle and just hoping to get that. But I do have one book. Oh, I have all these books. Actually, chests. So let's just quickly go through them. No luck from the chest, but I did receive one of these, so... No idea when Great Family is going to make a comeback. I mean, like, literally not until the era of Ari, Ari and Yetta and, um... I guess Ghost 13-month Yuriha, and that's about it. So we still got a while for that. I guess that uh, at one... Will be the other one. He's also like the only other spear bearer besides Rock. Fun fact. So we'll just uh, see what we can do right now. At least can't worry about the future. You gotta worry about the present. Anything's changing. Everything's changing. I mean, can't imagine what the next ancient's going to be. All right, let's uh get this going then. So. Yeah, I'm going to have to choose the Wild Needle for the magical version. I always double check this because last thing you want to do is pick the wrong one, but get that. And now the plan is to refine into the 60%, which I don't know how successful that's going to be. I can get some more from King's Order real quick. One second. Get all of these rewards. Play twenty eight and then back up to two twenty four million. Mm. 
Might as well actually. Um, I've been actually considering clearing out these legendary stones and everything. I for sure I am going to keep getting refines from that, so that's even more. We'll get the keys underway. At least I saved those. Um, and these purple boxes. Could actually get one more level for Goose Thing as well. Once I have the four now. And these transcend stones are just like it's insane to think that they have this even as an option. Like you'd better make it one each. But that's insane. So we can get that. Get one more of these. Um and then I could I'm just gonna clear this out, honestly. I mean 15,000 reds, 25,000 here, do I want to even clear this out at 7,500 for 150, um, that's a weekly purchase as well, I mean I don't know if I need it, that's the problem, hopefully I don't, but we're gonna find out. Alright, so let's see what happens. We are going to pray for a 60% refine stat, and we'll come back whenever we get there. Well, this is honestly unbelievable. I mean, it makes me like completely give up hope on refines, but that's like the second time I do a thousand. And I guess like with going for a legendary skill damage was too much of a stretch for Henry use, so I understand that. But going for a 60% fug, I mean, I've seen every single purple. 60%, I've seen more tower climbers and more great families than anything. And I couldn't get a single fug more than 30%. I even got a 90% great family. So I think it's better just to get the 30% at this rate. I mean, I don't really care. I don't think 30% is going to do much more, but at least it's an improvement for Rachel. And right now, I'm just trying to prioritize going for Tower of Trial clearing. I'm not transcending this. Uh, I just gotta save up my refines and hope for refine packs and then just go again, but getting a 60% would be great for VO because he also has a stun on his EX and even Hansung also has great CC. So that's like the only plan at this point, but yeah, I'm like so disappointed honestly, like I don't even want to, to bother with refines ever again. I mean, I don't know when those rainbow stones are coming out. In Korea, I think they got those with the name hunt station. But yeah, I mean, I don't, we haven't gotten that yet. So it's implemented into the game. It's unable to get it. And that pretty much just means I think you only get the high refines. So no, it just helps you protect them. They still have to go through the horrible system anyway. But it will at least let you protect one, get rid of the other one. I mean, it's like insane to think. So, 
That won't even help my case either. We just need a better way to get these refines or... They need to like fix this filter because it's honestly insane. When you're just trying to get fug for a fug weapon that they're going to give you everything but what you need. I mean, it's just... So over that shit, honestly. So over that. Um, yeah, I got 30% fug. And we're going to see what happens. I'm going to power up a little bit more though. So I am one short from a maxed out freedom weapon, which I want to do. So let's see if I can at least get 20 of these pieces. Yeah, I should be able to do that. Let's get the weak purchases. And I don't think I'm going to actually invest into Rock and the Knock because from what I've seen right now, they're not doing better than Enryu and uh and Anak, or Enryu and Gustang right now. So maybe when we get a T6 Anak weapon and you do super heavy investment, it will do well. But until then, I'm not doing all that. So Gustang's gonna be T6 weapon. Didn't raise the power too much, but the damage for him and Enryu should go up quite a bit. Uh, and then I do have armor. I could T5. I could go for boots. But it only gives me 10 crit. I could. Can't even do both. Unless I craft one. Um, oh no, yeah, I can't even do it. For this, I would need 9. Looking at the wrong armor. I think for the purposes, it's better just to go resistances. So I'm going to max out the chest, and then we're going to go for the boots after that. Kind of what I did with Fog, so I at least managed to max out this weapon before Whites. I kind of left it behind. I would have liked to get this transcended. I want to get every weapon worked on, at least Tier 3, so that I can get good refines and eliminate all my purples, but... It's just not meant to be, man. It's not meant to be. So I got that over with. I have the God's Inventory upgrading, so I've been working on it. For freedom, I've been giving almost everything but books. Anything I can spare. Besides that, though, I've been trying to save some resources. These sapphire or ruby shards are like the best. Actually given for experience, but now the experience has gotten so much. That I'm not getting too much levels. So I won't be able to get anything else for freedom today. Thorn is the same thing. I've been getting way more luck with Thorn stuff than I have been with freedom. But I turn out to be on the conservative side now, so I'm not really using any resources below 1000 for everything else. We got level 40 on Thorn right now. It's gonna be a very long way to 99 in this rate. Kranos and Pocket, I'll, I'll do with the abundance resources, but nothing else. I think maybe after I get them all to 40, I'd probably slow down because it's just costing too many resources to level up. And I am just wanting to prioritize freedoms and fug. Quite disbelief that I couldn't get that 60% fog, honestly, like that kind of really, really ruined things. So I had a plan of getting 60% and then Rachel would help blow by with everything. But then again, my Yon is also doesn't have a 60% EX gauge, not that she really needs it, but... 
Like tower climber and fog, my weapons are horrible. And that's only from the refine aspect. So I'm at 1.1 million. I think I'm gonna leave this video off here. There will be a part two, and the part two is gonna be on the progression side of things. But for the next one, I'm gonna end up powering up Kustang and trying to do Tower of Trial. I might even just go into story and I'm gonna try to clear right spot. I just don't care. I'm gonna try to go for the full progression. Uh, and I did I get asked to show the rankings for the servers. The rankings already changed. Um, the number two was, I think, Eldrain, and now he's Owl01. So, no idea what the name change is about. But a guy came out of nowhere. I mean, I haven't seen him in the top 10 ever. And then uh, all of a sudden, he overtook the rank two and three, and now he's like right behind me. Level wise, also, he got 250 before starting, and slowly get 250. Power of Trial right now. I haven't even tried to clear it, but I'm not on the list. Overall, though, I I somehow dropped levels despite the level cap being there. I think it's because people are just progressing and also um, paying into XP still, I guess, to stay ahead. It's insane. Power-wise, I am rank 6. Even after the little bit of a jump I got right now, I'll still be rank 6. Some Wow, they actually hit 1.2 million over here. Uh, Tower of Trial, we have three people hitting 450. I'm not really rushing for it. I just don't care. But I'll get there when I do. But that's going to be all for today's video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Good luck with your summons. Like I said, keep pursuing Gustang as best as you can. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video where you'll probably see why Gustang is the best unit in the game, hopefully. Until next time guys, live moss and stay free to play.